I think uh, IGN might have a, a comparison breakdown somewhere. I was well. I was trying to do like the PlayStation Plus versus the Game oh. Pass thing that they had on their website. Gotcha. But I'll I'll, I'll get it. Plus, uh, it says we are live. Plus, you probably already know it off the top of your head. What what comes in what? Oh, you don't. I mean, I got a, a basic idea. Okay. But, All right. Yeah. Hey, if you're just joining us, we're the News 19 Nerds. I'm Leroy. I'm Michael. So, it happened. It did. It, it happened. Um, Sony said, okay, Microsoft, we see what you can do. And we can, we can top that. Or we, we can match it, and some people might say top it. You feel like that's what happened? Oh, man. Uh, so, I mean, I guess the basic info out of the way... Uh, on Wednesday, Sony had a, a little mini presser, which overall, even if they hadn't put the price on there, uh -huh. like the quality of the presentation I thought was very good okay. in terms of like just game after game after game. I'm okay. um, dropping it. And I wrote them all down. We can kind of talk about it, whatever. And then at the end, they gave us the price. And for US, $4.99 for the fat version, $3.99 mm -hmm. for the digital version. Okay. Um, the largest console ever? It, yeah, that thing is. I'm still trying to figure out exactly how I'm going to put that. What in I'm my, trying to figure out is how was that bigger console? than a 3DO? 3DO wasn't small. Yeah. I mean, this, I guess this, maybe it was just taller or footprint wise. I, I don't, don't know. know, but. But, uh, yeah, $4.99 and $3.99. And then. I'm, hey, IMAX, you just got blocked. Oh, what did IMAX say? I can't even. <laughs> what, do you, what do you do? Talk about the heat. I don't oh. need that today. Oh, man. <laughs> Dang. Okay, oh, they're, are they playing this? They're playing your. Yeah, my bad. About to kick IMAX out the chat. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, so yeah, they they dropped that, and a few hours went by. Actually, right after the press conference, PlayStation sent out a tweet that said pre-orders will start tomorrow. Walmart said, "Uh, uh, uh, we go do it when we want." So let me ask you this: Was uh -huh. it Walmart who started it first? From everything that I've seen, it seems like Walmart was Walmart, the first person. Walmart was the one who effed it yeah. all up. And then yeah. everybody else followed suit, like Lins. Yeah. Okay. Um, thanks to Leroy and his top-notch journalism, he was able to tell me about it being on Target. Yeah. So I, I pre-ordered one at Target. Yeah. I also pre-ordered pre -ordered one at Best Buy, just in case something And that's the, the next day? Or uh, that night. That night. Okay. Yeah, more or less. Because we, cause as we saw the pre-orders were going, mm -hmm. sites were crashing. Yeah. It weren't allowing you to... GameStop had a, a page that I had never seen before. It made it seem like you were trying to attack, I guess there was... It like, looked like a, a, a DOS attack. Yeah, like a DDS attack on a, on a website. And no, it was just because so many people were trying yeah. to get to GameStop. I was like, oh, this is interesting. That's a problem I don't think GameStop has ever had in their life. No, they, <laughs> they wish they had that problem all the time. Um, which is, it's interesting that they couldn't get the site working because I'm sure they wanted to get all those sold... Or, they did, but I wish it, they, they, they probably wish it would have been smoother for them. So this is my, so, um, uh, so Brian Gamer says he tried to join your session, uh, but it wouldn't let him Wednesday night. Um, D. Steezel, I understand, longtime disgruntled Bulls fan here. Um, <laughs> I know your pain, sir. Uh, also, uh, hats off to the Heat and Jimmy Butler. Jimmy Butler has been on four different teams in the last through his career, and every team he's on, he gets them to the playoffs. Okay. I can't hate on Jimmy Butler. I will say, off topic, uh -huh. I was uh -huh. not. Hey, really? I, I, I deliberately just hit the audio off. I, I swear I you were. Um, I will say this. I did not expect the Heat to whip the Celtics' ass the way they have. I, it, it's been close. It hadn't been a beatdown. Mm -hmm. But I, I did not expect them to... The, so, game two, they had a 17-point lead. Mm -hmm. And leads, runs don't really matter in, in the NBA as much, but I, I didn't expect to give up. Who, who, who did the block? That's the big thing I remember. Everybody said uh, oh, somebody yeah. could have won a game and somebody did like a, a, a block. That was against the Celtics? Anyway, so okay, I wasn't trying to troll you. I, I just remember seeing that big headline. So uh, okay, so, so my hat's off to IMAX. He did call it. He was okay. like, "Y'all go run up against a buzzsaw." When once we get done with, you know, because I, I knew that he once that momentum, uh -huh. and I don't like to use this term, but people say momentum is a two dollar fill in the blank. Uh -huh. um, it's it shifts. So when you have it, um, okay. 
uh, IMAX, of course, is in all caps yelling things. Um, and Brian Gamer, you're right. The Celtic fighting is what kind of took out the steam, the, the wind out of my sails. Uh -huh. uh, so I'm a little upset, but uh, we, go, we go persevere. Okay. Now, Michael's laid out the facts. Uh, I'm going to oh, come on. in. You, you can do, I want to say, Brian Gamer, um, and anybody else who wants to play Avengers on PlayStation, I will probably play a little bit tonight. Um, around yeah, midnight game. Eastern time. Yo, it's, <laughs> it's fun. I know it's fun, but it's buggy as hell. It is buggy, but... Play your little Avengers Anthem game. <laughs> no, it's, it's not Avengers buggy. I mean, it's not Anthem buggy. It's not Anthem buggy. Uh, but it is a lot of fun being an Avengers Smash people around. But yeah, I'm going to try and play tonight, so maybe we can do a, a game session and play a little bit. So Whatever. we'll try. But Look go ahead and do that game. Sure. Uh, <laughs> so I'm going to be honest with y'all about the PlayStation presentation. Uh, I was really looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. We all watched it. Mm -hmm. Um... I'm gonna be honest with you, and I'm not. I'm not hating. This could be a hot take. Lord, it's probably not gonna be a hot take, but you better say something foolish. It was okay. Interesting. I thought Sony was going to bring it, and I, in my opinion, it was just okay. What What did you need for them to bring it? I really wanted to see something that I had not seen before. I keep and, telling and, and, you. And, and I understand that, but I guess this is the thing that what, what I wanted. I wanted like, and some people did get it. Some people got it. Like some people, when they got the Miles Morales gameplay, that was great. Mm -hmm. I wanted to see some names for the future coming up of something that was coming out that I had not heard or seen before. Now, Ragnarok was the one that I was like, oh, wow, that you guys are really... But I wanted something else because God of War has, was not the game for me that every, it was for everybody else. I'm not saying it's a bad game. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying it wasn't that one game where I was like, oh, I thought it was perfectly fine. Hmm. And the hype for the pre-order was good, but that took a lot out of me. Because hmm. I was upset, and I, and I don't know who to be upset with, and this is why. Sony is the market leader. Mm -hmm. For you to make that colossal mistake mm -hmm. and this whole pre-order thing really made your pre the presser of that day look like shit. Because you said that you were going to let people know it wasn't going to be so it's almost like you did this great presentation and you took a dump mm -hmm. right afterwards mm -hmm. and that really bothered me because you saw how many people could not pre-order one of these consoles mm -hmm. and then that really really bothered me that something that big mm -hmm. happened in 2020 now i don't know who sony needs to take out back and shoot mm -hmm. like old yeller but somebody's head needs to roll for that. Um, so behind the scenes, from everything I could read, it seems like Walmart jumped the gun and started doing pre-orders earlier than they were supposed to. I would tell And Walmart. it's funny. Go ahead, because I, I, well, no, what, what I would do to Walmart... It's, it's funny because <clears throat> it kind of mirrors a situation that we have in a real-life news story that we don't need to get into here with regards to people being out at bars and stuff like that in terms of... Because there will probably be some type of consequence that Walmart will face with Sony, but it's probably so small it's not even considered a consequence. And see that, and that's, this is a thing, and it, this goes back to something that people in the chat, people in the community have said, and I'm talking gaming community. I understand this is a business. Mm -hmm. I understand that there are certain things that are done in this business some people don't like. I understand Sony saying, look, we own the rights to marketing and doing things with Spider-Man, we're going to hold Peter Parker back from this Avengers game, and it's going to be exclusive. Mm -hmm. I may not like it, but I can respect it because it's a business thing. It's something that when Sony does their exclusives, I can understand that. I can respect it. That's a business thing. When you do this entire market presentation, you say, okay, because remember, last week we were trashing Microsoft for allowing themselves to be hacked and re having to release all of their stuff mm -hmm. because they did not have tight enough security because Windows Central got them. Mm -hmm. 
And then the very next week, what happens? Sony comes out, says, hey, we've got this great console. Here are the prices. We're going to set up pre-order. Remember when I told you that one day we were uh, in our emails and I was like, yo, we got to do this thing. You were like, yeah, I did this in May. And we were like, okay, when the email comes out, all of this. Didn't matter. It didn't effing matter. It and, didn't and, matter. And what really bothers me in this day and age, mm -hmm. and that's why I said, I just thought it was okay because everything afterwards, and it may not even be Sony's fault. Mm -hmm. It may be something that's out of their hands. For, th for this to happen on their watch mm -hmm. has bungled the next gen launch for a lot of people because I went online and I saw how many people could not get, and we already know quantities are going to be limited. Mm -hmm. We already know. And you know who I did see with, with consoles? And you know who I did see? Scalpers? There you go. Yeah, and, 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 that, and that's that's disheartening to me because I know... Keep, pause it for a second. Go ahead. I want to put this in the chat. Uh, for people who are excited for the next gen, how many of you were able to get pre-orders? Just kind of let us know your story in the comments. Keep going. And see, that, and that that's the thing. Yeah, and thank you for bringing it up because I meant to ask that question after we do this video. I'll be drinking this. Really? Go yeah. ahead. All right. Hold on, guys. We're going to be doing a little Hello. bit of news. Um, hey, Chip Jenkins, how are you? We, we have some... Hey, remember to ask my question. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was uh, downstairs. Uh, working on so, yeah. My biggest problem with this whole thing was the execution. This is two times within the span of a week that two major companies have had outside influences disrupt how they are going to present these consoles, this next-gen gaming. And it really leaves a bad taste in my mouth. And I want to hear from you guys how you feel about it. I like Sony's presentation. I'm not going to say it was bad. I'm not going to say it was lackluster. I really enjoyed seeing a lot of those games, seeing the Miles Morales game, uh, seeing that there's going to be an Ultimate Edition. Really like that. But I really felt for a lot of people who I saw online who wanted to pre-order a console, who thought this was going to be a streamlined experience, Really, really, and Zayla Maru, everything kind of sucked yesterday, didn't get a PS5 or NVIDIA. That's the thing that bothers me right now, that these companies haven't figured out how to do these releases, and that's the biggest problem that I have with all of this. Um, so, uh, D. Steezel, Brian Gamer, uh, D. Steezel says, SM Miles is my third most anticipated game behind CP 2077. Yeah, uh, I'm only, I'm be honest with you, I'm only buying a PS5 to play Cyberpunk on that. Uh, I, that's why I'm buying a PS5. One, because I think my PS4 is on its last leg and to buy and to play Cyberpunk. That's the main reason why I'm buying. And for the games I have not played on my PS4, Ghost of Tsushima, Last of Us 2, I want to see how that looks so that, I'm with you on that. Um, how y'all feel about them uh, waiting to, to, to waiting to have the pre-orders to say that Horizon Zero, uh, Horizon, and Spider-Man game coming to PS4? Um, I'm actually kind of okay with that coming to this iteration of consoles because it allows so many different people to play those games, and it doesn't price them out of gaming. Um, I know it would be an incentive to make people buy a console. However, I do enjoy the fact that if you're not able, especially in this time of COVID, uh, to not force people to spend five or four hundred dollars to play th to get this experience, uh, Brian Gamer, I understand what you said. It seems sneaky because it does seem like Sony for the whole time was saying we're not we're not going to have this, we're not going to have this. But from a business standpoint, it seemed kind of stupid to not allow those games for let that cross generation happen for at least a year. Um, D. Steezel, I'm with you. Uh, they both have been sloppy with this marketing and this idea of playing chicken with each other really made it, because if you think about it, we just got pricing for two consoles that come out in November in September. 
we got one price on September the 16th, and we got another price on what, uh, the September the 4th last week. It was at the 6th, whatever day that was. So within a week of each other, we've got pricing consoles of that are going to cost people $500 at the max. $500, well, not, no, not even going to say the max, because you've got bundles, you have peripherals, all these different these different things, and you want people to spend all of this money for these consoles, and you play chicken with each other, which, in a time when money is tight for some people, you should have gotten this out of the way. Like I, I, for anybody who is irritated, frustrated, piss the hell off. I'm, I'm with you. I understand. Um, I just became a parent this year. I know you're looking at it and you're like, this is discretionary money. I would like to be able to use this, but I got bills. And I understand how everybody feels about this with these companies playing chicken with each other. Well, who's going to go first? So you're going to go first? We... Why? Just tell us what the prices are. Let the chips fall where they may. Let us figure out how we're going to, you know, set aside this money to figure out how we're going to get these things. But waiting until September was trash. Uh, DC is right. Playing high and go seat. It, it really was trash for them to not, for them to wait this long. Because now you're looking at it. And then to have these come out right around each other. And then for you to say, Oh, well, we're going to wait till this happens, this happens. And it's like, if so, if Microsoft hadn't got hacked, this stuff would have came out this week. So how bad would it have been if this stuff all came out this week? And then the pre-order thing happened, all of this in the same week. It would have, honestly, it would have been worse. Um, the one good thing Microsoft has going for it is that they did, they can see what happened make calls to all the retailers and say, we will pull our console if you pull this crap. Um, that's the one thing I hope Microsoft sits down with its retail partners and says, if you F this up, we will make life hell for you. And that's one of the things, um, selling out of pre-orders really sucks because they know they have more units. I don't know how many units they have, but I will say this. They did a disservice by, by how they've handled this next generation launch for you to instill goodwill in your, the people who support you. Neither one of these companies have, has done a great job. Um, I will say Microsoft may have done a better job, but even Microsoft didn't go to do a good job considering they allowed some yahoos to hack their website and release their entire marketing plan before they were ready to launch. So... Uh, Damien Estrada, you're right. They're making Nintendo look great with its lower tiered, lower, lower tier when it comes to processing power graphics. Look like geniuses. Nintendo looks like Nintendo looks like they are playing chess while everybody else is playing checkers. Uh, I'm with you on that one. I I got nothing. Hats off to Nintendo because they look great right now. They're like, I'm glad we don't have these problems. So that's how I feel about this whole thing. But I will say that I am excited about the PS5. But the one thing I'm wondering from you guys is, are you excited to get one? Uh, or are you going to wait because you can still play Miles, Cyberpunk, <clears throat> Assassin's Creed, on your PS4 or your Xbox One X or whatever. Uh, Ken from Chicago brings up a good point. If you can afford half a grand for a console, what difference does it make? Why buy now? Are there next generation exclusives not currently available? That's a good point. Uh, Ray Sean K says, I'm waiting. It really doesn't seem like either one of them have had a big push or something huge that said you have to buy a next-gen console. Even Microsoft with its Xbox S and Series X, all that stuff is going to Game Pass. So why do I need Halo Infinite is going to Game Pass. I can play it on an Xbox One right now. Why do I need to buy this next-gen console? 
um, PlayStation or Sony, why do I need to buy your next-gen console if uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, Miles Morales, Cyberpunk, Assassin's Creed, I can still play on current gen? Uh, for gamers, it's great that you can still pick up one of these consoles and still play these games. However, for those people who are buying this console, why spend half a grand to get these things now? Um, it, Joel, it's not really, I can wait. We've seen a lot of people saying that they can wait for these consoles. So I, it's, <clears throat> I've never been a day one buyer, but my choice is crystal clear. Uh, Ryan Porter, what's your choice? Are you going Sony or are you going Microsoft? Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, I'm, it's going to be a poll out. I'm going to ask, and basically we're going to say, are you going to, with all the games that are coming out that are still going to be on this generation, nothing that I've seen has made you, made me say, I have to buy one. Now, I'm buying one because I know my PS4 is going to die eventually. That fan has been going. Uh, it's been putting off a lot of heat. Uh, so I'm going to get one. I've been good this year. My wife allowed me to do a pre-order. So, but... There's not a lot that made me say, I have to get this console. Uh, <clears throat> Brian Gamer, Xbox Series X for me. I don't need a big launch title because all my current, uh, <clears throat> all my current games will work. And that's one of the reasons why I, I don't mind what Sony is doing because I can still play my current PS4 games that I did not get to play on the PS4 because I hadn't finished or I hadn't gotten around to it or I'm waiting for them to come down in price. Come Christmas time, Black Friday, there's going to be a lot of games that's going to be a little cheaper. And that's when I'm going to start shelling out some money for those games that I'll play on my PS5. Uh, Evan Lives Matter. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't have to eat grass. Uh, we, uh... So yeah, that's basically what we've been talking about. Well, I, Michael had been talking. Michael had said he wasn't as excited. And the one thing, and I don't want to put words in his mouth, is he was saying he may not get a Series X day one. He may wait. Uh, he's thinking about possibly buying two PS PlayStations, one for himself and one as a family gift for somebody. Uh, D. Steasel says I might get an Xbox S X for at launch. Um, I will say this, the SX or, or S, the S is a great console for somebody who, who's a casual gamer. I got to commend Microsoft for that. It's not the same as the discless version of the PlayStation, but I got to commend them for saying, okay, here's a low, it's almost like having, what was, uh, if you guys remember the iPad, you had the iPad, was it the Pro, or the really nice iPad, then they had like a budget iPad version. It was a lower tier, but you could still do most of the same stuff. That's pretty much what Microsoft is doing. Um, I commend them for that, for looking out for that casual gamer uh, who is like, yo, I don't want to spend all this extra money on a console. I only come in every now and then. I commend them for that. that that's a smart business decision. Uh, John G says, I'll wait until fall 2021. I, I'll be honest with you, I think a lot of people are going to wait too. I think there's a lot of people who got caught up in the hype who are going to buy these consoles up. And I think there's going to be a lot of uh, scalpers, um, screw them, who are going to... Ah, thank you, Ken from Chicago. iPad Pro and the iPad Air. That's ba essentially what the Series X, S and X is. Um, I think a lot of people are going to wait this console generation, I think as Christmas time goes along and kids see this and they start bothering their parents, you're going to see some hype. But I think a lot of people who are smarter with their money are going to wait until next year and be like, yeah, I'll wait till they get them kinks out. Um, uh, DC's, you're right. The X, the Series S is next-gen gaming on a budget. And that's the one thing I will say, as much as this uh, on a budget that those things are, 
I will say that I'm a little disappointed in the digital because for the, oh, the same reason that I like classic and retro games, that stuff just works. And used video game stores, like our uh, here in Columbia we have, um, our com most of our comic book shops do, uh, do double duty with either selling action figures, toys, books, um, Scratch and Spin, one of our stores here does uh, video games, CDs, movies, you name it, they do it. Uh, same thing with Cosmic Rays, uh, Ray Hunter over there, he does albums, uh, movies, he does it all, the t-shirts. The one thing about those digital games that I, that I think scares me a little bit, this push to digital, is that you don't have that physical copy, you don't have that, the disc. And you're not able to go pick up, you know, an old game or a classic game. You're locked into whatever system buying it on that digital store. And if a game is no longer there, you don't have an uh, opportunity. And you, Brian Gamer, you bring up a great point. You can't pick up sale copies. So you're locked into whatever that sale price is, whatever they want to. And... Uh, that's the one thing that I that really scares me about this all digital push. Now, don't get me wrong; I can understand it from an e, uh, ecological standpoint. I believe that's the word. Digital saves packaging; it's better for the environment. All of that, but it's it it goes back to that thing of do you really own it if you don't have it in your hand? Um, it's. That is one of those things where I'm always, I'm always fearful of, but also for all those people who make money off of selling you, those used video game stores. I love those stores. I love, sometimes I don't even buy anything. I just walk around and just enjoy the nostalgia. Um, so I wish there was a way, IMAX, you can't buy digital use. I wish there was a way that we could trade digital files where if we, I wish we could get to like, you know, some type of digital packet with, and, um, I mean, they're nickel and diamond sort of microtransactions. Why not make it so that we could trade these games? I, I don't know how it would have happened. It, it would be something uh, beyond my comprehension. You can make digital copies on thumb drives. This, that's, that's the one thing I miss. Um, when my dad was into gaming back in the day, computer games, and we would go to these land parties and different things and we would uh, exchange floppy disks. Uh, I remember having stuff like this. I don't know if you guys can see that. That's the one of the original uh, Commodore 64 128 Dr. Doom and Captain America. Uh, I've got the original X-Men. That's how we found out about these. We, you know, we'd go to these little parties or whatever and we trade discs. I think this one had four. Was this four discs? But yeah, I'm showing my age with these right here. Uh, so yeah, that's that's my biggest problem with digital. So let's get to some of these comments. Uh, yeah, Brian Gamer, uh, but digital games almost never go on sale. Digital game, it's like they it has to be a while. Like I, I picked up the last Doom. Not Doom Eternal, the one before that. Uh, I picked that up for $7.99, and it was digital. Um, I enjoyed it. I loved it. But it was a while before that came down in price. And some games, I don't even, I, like Control. If you walk into a store right now, that game is still $60. And I'm not talking like... Uh, Kevin from Chicago, Leroy, have you heard of Steam, Epic Game Store, Good Old Games, Humble Bumble? Yeah, that's a good point. It's a lot of those Humble Bumbles, uh, a lot of those sale, but that's, the problem with that is I'm not sure if we're going to see that, how if the Microsoft Store and Sony's PSN Store are going to stop. Uh, now, Zaylin Rue brings up a good point. I think PS Games go on sale when Steam has their sales. That's that's the problem that I have with the stores. They seem to go on sale when someone forces them to go on sale. Um, and again, the sale copies, because we all know 
Call of Duty will be cheap in less than a year and it'll be on somebody's shelf. Uh, I, another service that I miss too, that I think we're moving away from, video game renting. Uh, that's one of the things I loved about Redbox. Gamefly is gonna be put out of business. It's the only one left if we all go digital. Uh, so I don't know what their business plan is long term because that day is coming. Uh, Let's see what else. Uh, there's a couple of things that weren't game related up there. We are still watching Raised by Wolves. I'm going to be honest with you. I have no idea what the hell is going on uh, in this show. I thought it was going to be one way and it turned out to be go the entire different way. So I don't even know if I'm still going to watch. I know it got renewed for season two. Uh, yeah, man, I don't know what this show is about, honestly. Um... We did, um, no, Ryan Porter, we don't have an Ed McKay's in South Carolina. Uh, we have, what do we have here? If we do, it's not here in the Midlands. It's probably in the upstate or maybe closer in Rock Hill or Charlotte. But no, we, um, uh, I'm trying to think. We used to have a store, I don't know if you guys uh, heard about it, maybe in North Carolina you have, called Manifest. That closed down. Um, so right now we have mainly what we have is used. Uh, our video game stores are either um, GameStop or your comic book shops who are doubling as everything. Um, there's a couple of just old, there's a couple of, uh, not software seconds. Uh, one is called Rogue Gaming, old school video games. With all they're doing is they specialize in video games. But even they have moved into toys, fun code, tchotchkes. Uh, old school gamer has moved into selling computer games, CDs, tapes. They're, they're pretty much, everybody is pretty much selling nostalgia nerd stuff. Uh, I did, we did see the stuff about Pedro Pascal. I'm hoping it's just a rumor. Uh, now we're just jumping around topics. Uh, I'm hoping it's just a rumor. I'm hoping he wasn't, we're hoping it was just creative differences and we hope that he sticks with this. And I know as an actor, it's probably hard not to be able to show your face and, but it's the role of a lifetime. I'm just hoping he's not, I'm hoping beyond words it's not true. He didn't throw a tantrum, that's just me. Uh, we also saw the Henry Cavill stuff. I'm excited about that. Hopefully Henry Cavill, knowing what he knows now, can bring some more to the role as far as uh, ideas for where to go forward. Because remember, when Henry Cavill was cast, he didn't have the clout that he has now. He wasn't The Witcher. He wasn't in A Mission Impossible. He wasn't, he wasn't where he is now. And he probably just, you know, they were like, stand over here, lift this, do this. So he kind of just was along for the ride. But now that he is kind of the linchpin of your superhero universe and fans have reacted and said, we want to see more of him. Warner Brothers, you know, gets their head out of their whatever and says, hey, let's, hopefully we see this uh, as a wonderful relationship because we have seen Warner Brothers right now is not doing too well with some of its cast members and let's hope that this helps smooth some things over. Um, I came from Chicago, I would say it's a role of a lifetime in the sense of anyone can wear the helmet, that's true, but the one thing I think I like about some of these roles that these guys have been getting, guys and girls, is that they can appreciate the fandom, and I think Pedro Pascal hopefully understands that him being in The Mandalorian for him is something that we... We appreciate him loving the character and the and the reverence and respect that he brings, and it's vice versa. Because I think if you when you see people like RDJ and you see people like Chris Evans who have a lot of respect for the role that they play, and then they have that love and affinity for the fans and vice versa, that's what I'm hoping Pedro Pascal understands that you donning this costume or having this helmet on or doing this voiceover work. It may seem trivial to you, but it's great for the fans themselves. 
Uh, Michael's back, so I can stop talking. <laughs> so I've been jumping around, but let's I get bet. back to uh, <laughs> Xbox. So Michael, you tell me or tell them mm -hmm. about uh, your feeling about buying an Xbox now. My feeling is I don't know if I want one anymore. Well, I definitely want one because, like I've, I've said several times on everything that we do, mm -hmm. I don't know how to spend my money well. So I will get one. I don't know if I need one day one anymore. Mm -hmm. And I never really needed it to begin with, but now I already have two pre-orders for a PS5. I don't plan on keeping both of them. I max wants to be, uh, join your family because I told him you were going to give one away as a Christmas <laughs> gift. <laughs> IMAX wants to be related to you now. Okay. Um, yeah, I may give it away to my niece and nephews. Uh, I don't know. Uh, who knows what I'll do with it. But yeah, I mean, that's already $1,000 that, that I'm spending. Mm -hmm. I got to buy them a game probably and another controller, so that's another 150 bucks. I need you to read that last comment. I don't think that was a slight either. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think that was more... I, I think that was more of a... Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, I mean, hey, here's here's the thing. Um, the the thing about the Stadia that drew me in was this promise of streaming online play without having to download games. And for that, it does work. The library isn't as great as I want, but it does work. Uh, Series X has this idea that everything will look better on a Series X. But as I've said before, I still don't have a 4K TV yet. And several of you have told me in the chat to actually wait probably till next year to buy a 4K TV. I, I don't know that day? I have to get it, huh? They did? So yeah, because I, I, I talked about buying one this year. They said actually wait till next year. Really? Yeah. I don't remember that. Yeah, I um, remember somebody people saying wait till Black Friday, but I didn't know they would. Somebody said wait till next year. Okay. And again, that's that's fine because there's nothing on Series X that's like, wow, this is the system killer. Everything that looks to be incredible isn't coming out for a while. When we had that video, everything was 2021, 2022, and later. And that, that's... Um, go, go ahead, because I... PlayStation 5, the game that really sold me in terms of next gen was Demon Souls. Um, if you really go back and look at it, like the ray tracing, the yeah. lighting, the shadows, we've never seen that on a console before. Uh, Miles Morales looks great, but that's still based on a PS4 engine, and that's even coming to PS4. Demon Souls, you cannot play that on PS4 or Xbox. Well, see, that's what I, that's what I was saying before you um, you left. For me, I just thought Sony's thing was just, damn, Zayla Maru Stadia pre-orders yesterday. <laughs> That's actually pretty funny. Um, I w and I, I'm not trying to say the pre-orders really left a bad taste in my mouth because I feel like both companies have effed up. Mm -hmm. I think for in 2020, for two companies to start their next generation console, and this is the best you could do, wait it till September, mm -hmm. a week apart, to drop prices, to basically say, here's your next-gen consoles, and neither one of them has a game that says, you need to buy this system. Mm -hmm. Why are you... I know why I'm doing it. I know my PS4 is on its last leg. I've said this before. Um, I, the, I can hear the fan as it keeps... As I'm playing it for a while, and like if I leave, I'm like, what is that? No, Oh, that's the PS4. Look, so I know... My PS4 Pro is loud on Avengers. Is it? Yeah. So, uh, so I'm... I'm I knew I was getting a PS5 because I, I, there was no point in buying a Pro mm -hmm. with the 5 coming out. Yeah. But, ooh. Well, the Heat just won the finals. LeBron's out. <laughs> <laughs> LeBron just rolled his ankle. Uh, Aww. But, yeah, there was no game mm -hmm. on either one of these consoles that said, I have to buy this console to play. Cyberpunk is not exclusive to next gen. It's going to be on both systems. Halo Infinite is not coming out, and then it's going to still come out on Game Pass. So I don't need. Well, to... not that it's Game Pass, but it's going to come on Xbox One. It's no. It's I mean, going... no. I'm saying, but that like the fact that it's coming out on Game Pass. Is what I'm saying is, it's not... coming out on Game Pass for both consoles, okay. next gen and this gen. So okay. I, you don't need to buy one. Okay. Uh, the games that came out that Sony was playing, you know, hot potato with. Saying you that we we believe in generations, and they were like, "Oh yeah, that was dumb." We have a a, a subscriber base of t of a hundred million consoles out there. Mm -hmm. Why would we not make Miles Morales and Horizon Zero Dawn? Like that was dumb on their part. Yeah, I can respect that, but there is no game that says I need to spend half a G to get. Yeah, and that's why I said for me, I just thought 
Microsoft, Microsoft, and we crushed Microsoft last week for, 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 I will say we made fun of them for allowing themselves to get hacked. And I have just as much disdain for Sony for allowing this pre-order fiasco to happen mm -hmm. because I don't know how uh, Walmart did it, but if I was Sony and their people, Walmart owe me some money. I mean, they might. Walmart owes me some money. It's going to be interesting to see. It, it's going to be interesting to see what Xbox does on the twenty second. Oh yeah. If, if, if it's smoother, if, if it's smoother, that that sounds cool. But also, does that also mean that maybe the interest isn't as high? Well, this is, and we talked about this before too. And I said this right here. If I was Microsoft, after I saw what happened yesterday, mm -hmm. I was Microsoft. I'd be on the phone at every one of my retailers, and I would say, if you pull this shit next week. Mm -hmm. A pre-order goes out before I said, we will burn you to the ground. I would, th I'm telling you, I, because you don't want to mess this up. Mm -hmm. Because you, you turn people off when you do that. Um, I don't think the, the, the interest will be waned. The one thing I did wonder was, will people have enough money? Mm -hmm. You know, because you're, again, in, in times like this, money's tight. Why am I going to spend X amount of dollars for your thing? Mm -hmm. And now I have to choose between one. And I really don't like we're, we're I'm not financially stable. You know, I always feel like I'm a check or two away from being homeless, but I'm in a good place. I didn't get laid off. A lot of people did lose their job. Hell, people lost their life behind this stuff. Mm -hmm. So we're in a we're in a, a comfortable place to be able to talk about this stuff. Yeah. But when it comes to these things, you waited until September to tell us pricing for something that's coming out of November, mm -hmm. to me, that's just bad business. And this playing chicken that's with not, each other. This is not the first time that's happened. True, but this it's is the- Nintendo Switch did it. But And Nintendo Switch sold gangbusters first year, still selling gangbusters. I understand that, but Nintendo's a different entity in mm -hmm. and of itself. So Nintendo will still sell you the same game 37 times. And Super you and it's still all -Stars. And you, and it's still- I didn't, I didn't buy that. The, this time. <laughs> But yeah, like, I have a problem with that. I have a problem with them playing chicken up until the last minute. Mm -hmm. And that's the, I guess, as, as I looked at everything, as much as I'm excited about a PS5 and I can't wait to break it out and, you know, figure out how I'm going to display it or whatever, it still left a bad taste in my mouth about that pre-order. Mm -hmm. It still left a bad taste in my mouth that Microsoft, as big as a company it is, it got hacked and forced into de debuting its its marketing strategy because it had its entire marketing strategy leaked mm -hmm. in 2020. Yeah. You sell cybersecurity. Um, <laughs> like, yeah. But you say that, but you still give Sony that money? I am, but I'm going to be honest with you. I don't care. You, but I'm going to be honest with you. Uh -huh. If me and my wife talked and she was like, hey, we're not going to be able to get it, I'd be all right. Okay. I, 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 and I honestly say that as much as I love Sony. Is Katie in the chat? No, but okay. I'm just... <laughs> I'm just checking. She might have texted me. Okay. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not as blowed as I would have been. Mm -hmm. Like, if they'd have told me Cyberpunk is only on the PS5, and I can only... And, I, and she was like, yeah, we, we can't get it this year. Mm -hmm. I'd be blowed. Right. But I, like, I'm like, okay, spend $40 and get it on the PS4. Well, it's, it's the thing that we talked about before with these console generations a long time ago, before, probably even before the May or the first event that Xbox had, we were saying the leap to the next console generation isn't going to blow people away the, the, like, year one, like it did between, like, going from PS2 to PS3 or PS3 to PS4, just because the things, the biggest things that we're seeing improvements are, are the stuff behind the scenes. See, I don't even need, that. see, that's, I guess, that's where... I don't disagree with that. Mm -hmm. I don't need you to blow me away with graphics or what. I need you to have a game that says, I can only get this experience from your console. Mm -hmm. For some people, it was God of War. Mm -hmm. That Ragnarok at the end, sold. I'm whatever, Take my money. Mm -hmm. I didn't see that game. Mm -hmm. Neither one of them sold me that game. Mm -hmm. I would have been okay or I would have been excited. Now, I don't know if they can do it. If you'd have said Dragon Age, Mass Effect, Killzone, Resistance Fall, something. Killzone? Bro, you better talk about uh, 
I um, love Killzone. I know you do, but I'm saying the people that make that are, are busy making Horizon Zero Dawn. I, uh, but what I'm saying is, Gorilla, mm -hmm. if Gorilla took what they did with Horizon, mm -hmm. put that in the Killzone, mm -hmm. oh, be still my heart. Mm -hmm. Like, but that's what I'm saying. Like, where is that game? And for some people, it's Ratchet and Clank. That's just not my game. For some people, it is a new Resident Evil. That's just that's what I'm saying. So, like for me, mm -hmm. it wasn't that game. So I'm not knocking it. It just wasn't the one that made me say, here's my credit card. I did it because I know eventually I'm going to have to get one anyway. Right. Because that's how we use our PlayStation is how we, we have the smart TV. But our PlayStation, I haven't figured out how to hack to put HBO, HBO Max, Max, Peacock, yeah. and some of these other apps that, you know, uh, Roku and Amazon are, you know, fighting with each other. We don't want you to have our app on. Shut up. Right. Um. So there was nothing there, no game you were like, oh, this has potential? No. Like, like... And, and that's only because you can play Miles Morales on PS4. Like this. Last of Us 2, PS4. Mm -hmm. Ghost of Tsushima, PS4. Mm -hmm. Control, hadn't even played it, PS4. I will buy, I may buy the Ultimate Edition, but where was that game that said, you want this experience? Yeah, I mean, and, and, and that's and to be fair, and again, to me, the game that's sold in terms of you can't play it anywhere unless it's like a high-end PC is Demon Souls. But most of those games are like, okay, this is probably high-end PS4 stuff. Mm -hmm. it, it it probably is a matter of Sony and Microsoft were both thinking, we need to get these systems out now. Oh yeah, we we need to get that get that install base start that install mm -hmm. base growing it, and may, hopefully next year, 2021, 2022, then we'll see. Oh, these are games that are only going to be next gen, but. They, I think it was a matter of them. We need to start growing this base now. Oh yeah, and uh, I I re I respect Sony for at least trying. Bravo to Microsoft for their Game Pass system. Mm -hmm. um, I respect Microsoft for their. I mean Sony for their at least attempting the PlayStation Four games that you can play day of with the PlayStation Plus, whatever that thing is. Um, mm -hmm. I, I I can appreciate that. That was a nice gesture, mm -hmm. but there still wasn't that game that said, for this immersive experience, you have to get this console. And a question that I, that, that hasn't been answered to me, chat, you you let me know. That PlayStation Plus offer that lets you download download those games, is that only for PS5 people? Probably. Or can PS4 people do it? I don't know. Because if I would kind of be upset if I was a PS4 owner, it's like, well, it's on my system. Why can't I play these games? I'd be mad if I bought those games. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's, that's early Doctor Syndrome anyway. You buy a game, eventually it'll be on PS Plus or for Xbox, it'll go to Xbox Gold. Or but I, and, that's what I, and that's why I said every generation that is gone, they've had a game that said, this is at launch, you have to buy the system. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm like now. And, and maybe it's because I'm older, I'm a little smarter. I don't have control of my money all the time. So uh, maybe that's what it is. But mm -hmm. it also is one of those things where I'm like, I still got enough stuff to play right now where I don't need a PS5. Mm -hmm. You haven't shown me anything that says we have to have this. Sure. Again, I'm buying it out of necessity. It's a utilitarian purchase. It's not a luxury purchase or a purchase that says I have to have this. Okay. And that's why I said it was just okay, you know. Um, did, they, did the uh, chat talk about their pre-order stories? Did anybody pre-order? Uh, a lot of people are waiting. Interesting. That's what a lot of people are waiting until 2021. Okay. Uh, Ryan Porter says that he... Y'all are smarter than us. I mean, it was either this or buying a PS4 Pro. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that makes sense. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah. that's that's pretty much what it was, where I was going to end up selling some stuff, because when this one goes, mm -hmm. that's it. Because, <laughs> I mean, because that fan goes hard mm -hmm. on Warframes sometimes at night. Interesting. Um, so... Sony miles behind Microsoft in the backwards compatible department. D. Steasel, I mean, he's not wrong. <laughs> Microsoft, you can play, I don't, you can play Xbox, original Xbox games, 360, and Xbox One games on it. I don't know how fully compatible the original Xbox is, but still, that, that's a huge catalog of games to be able to play. Somebody brought up, and we, I saw it, and I wanted to get your opinion on it, because you play with the Switch, you, you know, um... You 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 really dabble in uh, mobile gaming. Does X Cloud interest you? Because that's available now. 
xCloud is cool. I don't have, I got an iPhone, so oh, it don't mean nothing to me. Oh, you I, I don't have, the only smartphone I have is the one that work gave me. <laughs> so, um, but I'm, of course I'm super interested in streaming gaming. I got Stadia. Yeah, but what is, that's my point. Would you be willing to get a, because that's a work phone. Mm -hmm. If you were, let's say, instead of buying a, Hear me out. Instead of buying the Xbox Series S, mm -hmm. would you be willing to upgrade your crappy phone mm -hmm. and get a more up-to-date phone to, to do, do streaming mm -hmm, stuff? To do, um, is that something that's in that's in your purview? Have you thought about it? I, I, I don't know. I like the idea of maybe playing on the go, but yeah. I still because you have because like, reason why I, I bring it up is because you still have the Switch. Right. But with X Cloud, you'd be able to play all of your Xbox games. Will of the Wisp and all this other stuff yeah. on the go on your phone, um, and you could get rid of that cool. track phone that you have. Nah, man, that phone's for life. <laughs> um, but I want to be able to. I want to play on a nice TV. Like I, I want that feeling of playing on a nice TV. So I don't know because as much as I love my Switch, I probably do play it more on a TV than I do portable. Okay. Um, like it's nice if I go on vacation or something. I ain't going on vacation. Although I'm going on vacation. But, um, so, yeah. So, all these people coming back, and now you're telling me that? I just thought about it. <laughs> well, oh, there we go. I'll see you in a minute. <laughs> um, but, yeah. Um, I, I, I do like the idea of xCloud, mm -hmm. but I don't know if, if it's so enticing that it makes me want to go get an Android phone and be like, oh, let me play on the phone. But the, the, the technology is cool, for sure. Uh, D. Steezel brings up a good point. There's a gold mine of digital PS2, 3 Sony games not taken advantage of. I, that's one of the biggest things I think Sony does not do a good job of that Microsoft does. Mm -hmm. And Nintendo is the freaking king. Mm -hmm. Go back and, I don't want to say remaster, but go back and allow people to play those games. And, and, and have a packet, do a bundle, you know. You see the nostalgia for people wanting to play these updated uh, Resident Evil games. Man, mm -hmm. put Gradius and like do a package of like shooter games. You know, yeah. just, yeah. it, it, you're, they're right. Uh, I don't know. I just I'm, I've been thinking about it, and, I, and as from from a consumer standpoint, as much as I love gaming, I really have not been as excited, or I've, I've felt. It's almost like you ever drink something or ate, ate something that was really good mm -hmm. and it had an aftertaste yeah. and you were like, that's how I feel about these, the next gen game. Like it's, it's good, mm -hmm. but then it has this aftertaste where it's like they can't get out of their own way. Yeah. So that's, that's how I feel. Um, one thing I wanted to talk about uh, real quick was we, we were talking about some casting things. What? We gotta go, but okay. They're just, no, it's real quick because okay. they asked us about, uh, and I, we were, I was talking about, some of the casting things they asked us about Raised by Wolves. And I was like, yeah, I don't know what's going on. I don't know if I'm going to stick with it in season two because it got renewed mm -hmm. uh, after this first season because I have no idea what the hell is going on. It is a weird show. But one of the biggest casting news I think that happened this week was She-Hulk. Mm -hmm. Explain to somebody who is not the biggest Tatiana fan or who doesn't know her body of work from Orphan Black why having her as... To, to, so... <clears throat> As somebody who isn't a pure comic book fan, um, not breaking news, I've said it before, Leroy's comic book fan of the Among Us, I mean, the biggest one Among Us. Mm -hmm. To me, I think, I, I, and come here, I, I know a lot of people maybe picture somebody bigger, like physically mm -hmm. bigger as a She-Hulk person. To me, I'm not so worried about that because Marvel has proven that they can get the right actor for the yeah. actress for the right job and mold them to be however they want them to look. Um, I, I go back to when Gal Gadot, friend of the show, Gadot Gadot, however you pronounce her last name, when uh, she was first cast as Wonder Woman, everybody's like, she's so tiny. And she's still tiny. She's, she's, she is bigger now, but she has, I think, grown into the role, and I think oh, she's yeah. a good Wonder Woman. So I'm not worried about the physicality of what Tatiana Maslany can bring. I think she has incredible acting chops. Um, Orphan Black was a show on BBC America. And Brian Gamer's like, she does her thing in that. Yeah, and she played six or seven maybe eight different versions of clones mm -hmm. they all seem different i mean aside from her face 
they do seem like different people yeah, with different, different personalities. Yeah. I thought I watched the first season. I think and she's really good. So at it. I, I think she's able to do multiple different roles. I think she can do comedy, which is great because, as I understand it, there's a long time ago when uh, She Hulk was kind of first started. There was a little bit of fourth wall breaking. I think they've gone away from that now. But even in her like legal career, they kind of make fun of stuff in the Marvel universe. So I think she's able to do comedy. I think she can do drama well. So I'm excited for it. I think the the and D Steezel brings it up, and it, that's just for for me from a. a D Steezel says, "Got to keep it real. I'm not a fan of that cast only because she looks nothing like Jen Walters to me." I'm gonna be honest with you. That's where I am. Mm -hmm. I, I I when I expected Jen Walters, I kind of ex when in the comics I always looked at She Hulk as. And I'm, and again, I'm not knocking the actress. I'm not saying she's not attractive. I was looking for someone taller, more like a supermodel type person. Okay. That 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 type of tall. When the woman walks in a room, your head turns, mm -hmm. and she's green. I was kind of looking for that, so that's why I wanted uh, Alexandria Dodato. Um, you were close. Friend of the show, we know how to, we're close on your name. I, guys in the comments, uh, explain to people who are new, I am never going to get your name right, not because I don't want to. English is my first language and I'm not very good at it. Um, I can just admit that. I, I am my father's son when it comes to names and we're in pronouncing words. Uh, I really, I really wanted someone who had more of a physical presence mm -hmm. to what come on screen because I always enjoyed in the comics Jen Walters or the woman who plays or the woman who is She Hulk the way they draw in the comics whereas Mark Ruffalo's character gets the whole disheveled kind of nerdy thing down Jen Walters was somebody who always had her blank together mm -hmm. she went to law school she was smart she was beautiful she got the blood transfusion and it was almost as if it was this problem for her, but her life was great. Mm -hmm. And I think her acting ability, Tatiana, is going to be great with the character. It just wasn't my first choice. Now, with that being said, I didn't want Christian Ritter to be Jessica uh, Jones. Jessica Jones. Mm -hmm. I wanted... Alexandra <laughs> Daddario or whatever. I, I, yeah. I did as well. Uh, I really did. So that's just because I you know, have a little mild crush on her. And I do, but I do want to see her on screen because I think she is a great actress. I think she did really well in True Detective. I think she does good. Um, there's a, sh a movie with her and um, who's the girl married to Justin Verlander? Percy and the Lightning Thief. Percy Jackson. Huh? She's in the Percy Jackson movies. Yeah, she is in that. Um, and she's in San Andreas. And she's in Percy Jackson. Um, I'm just saying. She's, she's in a bunch of movies. But she's in. She was in a rom com with. Uh, uh, she Justin was on Ver White Collar. Uh, who I was she? A lot of that lady. Uh, Justin Verlander's wife, the one, the lady with the breasts, who's always on Sports Illustrated. Oh, that movie that didn't do well with yeah. uh, William H Macy. No, right. not think, that one. Sorry, I think he directed it. The movie you're talking about. Where they were argu they were like they got stranded. It was a cute movie. Okay. I think so. I I like her acting ability, mm -hmm. and I personally, and this is just me, that's because I love the woman and I support everything she does, even the bad movies. I really want to see Gina Carano and more stuff. So I, I'm hoping. Someone sees her and says, Big Barda, that's her. But I was hoping beyond heart of hearts that they picked her to be she Hulk. I really was. Was she in the running? No. Oh, okay. I just was like, the, you know, Dark Horse Candidate. Oh, you, you bring out some Wizards Magazine stuff. Oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I, I, in my head, I'm dreamcasting everybody. Okay, cool. I've already picked out the X-Men I want. Okay. Even though I know that's Phase 7. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, ooh, what? I thought Christian was met casting too. Um, I will say this, D. Steezel, Christian Ritter has grown on me. Oh, she has anti-trans comments? Oh, didn't know that. Man, you can't like anybody. <laughs> yeah. uh, D. Brian Steezel, Gamer ruined my night. Thank yeah. you, Brian Gamer. Uh, d d been a fan of She-Hulk since John Burns. Uh, friend. Yeah, see that, and that's why I said, I will, buy, like, you put She-Hulk in something, I'll read it. Because mm -hmm. I love the character. And I think recently they've been doing a great job, but I have bought covers just because She-Hulk is on it. Cool. I really have. There's some people who have drawn uh, She-Hulk like nobody's business. So I was really expecting a kind of tall, leggy type woman. Mm -hmm. And so 
I'm not knocking this casting. It just wasn't the one I would have picked. But hey, I've been wrong before. I say it, and I will keep saying it. I was wrong about Heath Ledger. <laughs> most people were. I was most people. Yeah. Uh, we got to wrap up, y'all, because we got news yeah. kind of happening. I'll tell you what I wasn't wrong about. Henry Cavill, back as Superman. Hey. <laughs> wrap these people up. Uh, oh, what got you through the week? <sighs> Warframe and, I'm going to be honest with you, Lower Decks. Okay. I'm really liking Lower Decks, y'all. Uh, what got me through the week was Marvel's Avengers. Yeah, man, these bugs. And Brian Gamer said they updated the game. Oh, I can't wait to go home and play tonight. Oh, you go home to play Avengers Anthem? You let me know how that is. Stop saying that. That game is, <laughs> they, that game is in a better state than, than Anthem launched, so don't do that. Um, it's buggy, though. I mean, bugs are bugs. It is what it is. Um, and there's an anime on Netflix called Great Pretender. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's really good. It's, it's a heist anime. Very good. I recommend it. I think it's like 13 episodes right now of the first season. A lot of fun. That's what got me through the week. Great Pretender on Netflix. All right, guys. Uh, it was a little disconjointed. Um, you got a lot more of me than you probably expected or wanted. Um, <laughs> I apologize for butchering anybody's name. Is it in English? It's Yes, it, it is in English. Rosetta Stone? Yeah, it teaches you. English. No, Brian Gamble. Oh, is it in English? I'm guessing talking about the anime. I thought he was talking about the <laughs> no, great pleasure uh, is in English. Oh, no. I needed that. Um, yo, stay safe out there. Stay away from the negativity, y'all. Uh, and we'll hope to see y'all next week. Peace. <laughs>